Today, we're going to be working on some autumn themed, possibly Halloween themed bases by Secret Weapon Miniatures. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. On this glorious Friday morning in the Beat Slab in Hollywood, California, I'm going to be hitting you up with another painting tutorial. Today, we're going to be working on some secret weapon bases, the field of screens. I'm going to show you to tie an overall theme in with your army through simple dry brushing, airbrushing, and wash technique. These are some great bases. You're going to want to check out secret weapon miniatures. If you guys are looking for some free stuff, some giveaways, you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one painting classes, some models in the mail, raffle opportunities in general, you're going to want to check out the Twitch channel. Twitch dot tv next underscore level underscore painting it is basically live tv for modeling and hobby related tutorials chris marco tim arch pavel also you can never forget matt and lauren thank you guys patreon is my personal crowdfunding page it's how i keep the lights on thank you guys from the bottom of my heart you're also going to want to check out the longward.net. It is the home of the battle reports and the fastest growing library of video content related to Warhammer, 40K, and more. Anyway, guys, let's do this. Let's do this thing. First up, Minotaur Snow White. It's one of the only Minotaur paints I still use on a regular basis. We're going to come in on this base that we've already primed black. And we're going to do a couple of quick little spots of white on these pumpkins. Just a simple pre-shading technique. We want to paint these pumpkins orange, but we don't want to paint them with our paintbrush because it's a little bit more annoying than I want it to be. I want the gravel on this base to be black so I can just dry brush up some exciting browns, but I do want to punch these pumpkins up a notch, and this is one of the easiest ways to do it. This is an ancient Chinese technique. Simple pre-shading technique. We're going to let that white do the work. It doesn't matter that the white's going to get on the black we already laid down on the brush because it's way easier to go back in and wipe out the white than it would have been to try to cut in all that black around the pumpkins. We're going to use hot orange from Vallejo. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite go-to oranges. has so many applications. We're going to water the orange down, put it in our airbrush. It's going to be a lot thinner than normal. We're going to come out real thin. 99% air, 1% paint. Super thin, uh, super delicate trigger work. Just let it naturally nurture up and stick to the white. It's going to stay brighter near the white and it's going to stay darker near the black. It's a real simple theory and concept to put into action. This is a straight technique. Very little skill in most of the things we do here in Next Level Painting. All technique. So you can see we're already getting a real nice orange. This hot orange is amazing. I use it to mix in with red, highlight red. It's a great orange all on its own. It's a real, just natural, yet vibrant color. I like it because it is kind of that in-between stage of like a dirty orange and an incredible blazing orange. Definitely recommend it. Vallejo makes some good stuff. So come on strong. Come back on. As soon as the paint dries on one pumpkin, go to the next one. Come back. Build it up. I'm talking about three thin layers. And if you do this right, you don't have to set the base down, let it dry, and come back in. I'm blowing so much air on this model, they're drying super fast. And there you go. That's a pretty clean transition on these pumpkins. They're really bright. They're really orange. You can see the natural transitions in them. But we're not going to stop there, guys. Now we're going to grab that orange fire. This is a very bright orange. We're going to come in over top what we just did. Real simple. I bet you already guessed it. And we're going to punch it up one notch. Because we are going to wash these pumpkins. So you know how I like to do, I always like to get that color looking its absolute brightest before I come in with the wash. I find that the wash will do its best in that scenario. I apply this theory to everything, uh, including metallics. Like I love to come in super bright with a metallic before I come in with a heavy wash. It does so much more work. It's just one of the techniques we use at Next Level Painting to marriage the quality with the quantity. Now that that fire orange is laid down you can see it's even brighter there's still a transition there the pumpkin does get darker toward the gravel very natural effect here couldn't be happier but uh, look at all that you know overspray we got though that's obviously gonna have to get removed and this is what i always like to figure out when i paint a model 
what's the fastest approach? In this scenario, it was lighting a little overspray get on the black. Then coming back in with the paintbrush and just rapid fire knocking down all that overspray. And look how easy this is. This is really just a little bit of painting. Imagine if we came in there and tried to paint these, these um, pumpkins orange after we did all the base work. Like imagine if you airbrushed all the dirt in and then you came in and had a hand detailed detail these pumpkins. That would have been an epic waste of time. So this is a methodical process. You don't want to get any of this black on the pumpkins. It's going to undo all that sweet airbrush work and force you to come back in there with a paintbrush and then paint these pumpkins. Not what I'm trying to do today, guys. Very um, simple concept here. And what I like about this base is that there's a lot of brushwork to be done on it. It's not all airbrush. A lot of bases you can get away with so much airbrushing and then just a bunch of dry brushing. Look at the vines, the cool little rocks. Um, uh, you know, we have so many places we can go with a base like this. And I did want to dry brush over black. A lot of times you'll see me like airbrushing the browns in and then dry brushing up over that. This is not going to be that case. This is a nice like nighttime, cool, spooky theme base. I want the dirt to be nice and dark with some exciting highlights. Let's move on. This is a good color game color earth i love this color man like i've been using this color like crazy so we're gonna come on and we're gonna use this to, to basically just pull out the stems on these pumpkins simple you can come back in there and crack out on these stems you can come in there and mix a little green in with them do anything you want basically i just brought up a couple of pictures of what pumpkins look like in a, when they're in their patch like when they're all on the vine still and i just kind of mimic that so the same principles apply guys don't let this brown get on the orange because then you're gonna have to go back in there and paint that orange any highlighting we do on these pumpkins with a paintbrush we want to do it on our time and because we want to not because we made a mistake all right let's move on we're gonna take that same color and now we're gonna do some work with it so grab your ass a nice little dry brush and come on you know, not super dry brushy, but not super paint brushy, if, you, if that makes any sense. We came on with a real thick coat, build it up, let a lot of the black still show through in the cracks, and just keep dry brushing it back and forth until you feel like you have a good effect. You see, I like to keep some of the darkness around the pumpkins, almost creating a shadow where, where a lot of the black still remained. Now you can come in with a smaller paintbrush and you can dry brush out those dark areas to match the rest of the base if you want and every coat is kind of re-intensifying the brightness of this base i let all that dry i let the the paint all kind of settle down a lot of times the paints will mute themselves out a little bit as they totally dry and absorb the black underneath them and you gotta come in with a quick rapid fire highlight after that now we're gonna grab underbelly blue this is a great color from p3 and we're just gonna quick rapid fire paint these rocks with underbelly blue this is a nice gray that clearly has a light blue mixed into it it's almost like a sky blue mixed into gray it's a great place to start with on rocks if you're going to come back in there and drop a heavy wash on them previously stated before i love to go as bright as i can before i use a wash methodical same deal you don't want to get any of this underbelly blue on the brown or the orange and there we go rocks engaged they're all looking good and there's a lot of contrast here really bright rocks over really dark dirt now i normally um don't always start with gnarls green i usually start with iosin green but gnarls green felt right i looked up a couple of pictures of pumpkins so i'm going to go in with gnarls green it's a real true forest green and we're just going to paint these vines and these big leaves now we will obviously highlight these but first it's about being patient methodical getting every little area on these vines without getting any of that green on the brown or the rocks or the pumpkins as previously stated now you can come back in with this green like i said do a couple quick little highlights on the stems of the pumpkins in order to create like that natural like it was just taking out the vine look i looked up a few pictures of pumpkins eventually i do that on my own time this tutorial isn't going to go into that world you can do whatever you want there's a lot of techniques so you can see we're slowly building up this vine 
you know, real smooth strokes. We got enough water on our brush to let the paint flow, but not so much that it, that it pulls up around the vine of the dirt. That is exactly what we're trying to avoid on a project like this. So now we're gonna skip over to the other vine real quick. This one's a little bit more difficult because it's more windy and there's rocks and pumpkins to the left and to the right of this vine. But the vines really help sell the, vase, the base. It makes it look like it's in a pumpkin patch in some spooky graveyard somewhere. I actually pitched the idea of throwing a tombstone on this base, but Optimus Stein said, nah, we don't want no tombstones. A little sad. Same deal, here's a vine that's still attached to the pumpkin. And now we are gonna highlight it. Now we're gonna go straight up to the top. Necrotite green, mixed in a little bit with our gnarls green, and we're gonna do some subtle blends, and then we're gonna transition directly into some hardcore edge highlighting. But we're gonna build a subtle blend first. This is exactly the, the best green I always like to use. I always find a reason to sneak Necrotite green into any green application. I love it just so much. And you can see here, we've gotten a nice little highlight on these leaves. Pumpkin vines are looking their, their best. Everything so far is coming together on this base. Now, you guys know me. If I use Necrotite Green, you know I'm always going to pull out another color right after this. Flash gets yellow. All day, every day, I love to mix a little Flash gets yellow in with my Necrotite Green. Come on fresh, drop a couple of final crisp line highlights on the vines giving them a little bit of a highlight toward the top, makes them absolutely pop. I do everything I can, even on muted earth tones, to make things pop. And this is a real simple way to do that. Now, once you um, identify what your light source is, you can decide what level of highlight you want to apply. I've decided just kind of traditional top down, just in the middle of some of these areas in the vines, not the whole vine. Now, here's some ancient Chinese technique we're gonna go in with the uh, Flesh Shade Gloss Wash from GW, and we're gonna draw, drop a heavy wash off on these pumpkins. Now the Flesh Shade has a lot of red in it, and that's perfect for washing these pumpkins because the gloss washes from GW, they actually preserve the color so much more than the matte washes. And you can see that it's settling into those cracks and leaving the orange on this pumpkin totally unfucked with. I absolutely love it. Now you can do whatever you want after this wash. You can come back in with the hot orange, anything and highlight those pumpkins up. In the meantime, we're gonna grab some non-oil wash. It's the, it's the GW Gloss Wash as well. And we're gonna wash down these rocks. Little bit of a heavy wash. Let it pull away from some of the flat areas, but we're gonna definitely let it settle in some of the, the more extreme angles of the rock. And this will absolutely give us a nice stony effect that you can come back into and dry brush to your heart's content, make it look as stony as you want. We've done that a billion times. Make sure to hit every rock on the base. It's not a big deal if the black wash gets into the dirt around the rocks. That's literally meaningless because it would just add to the shadow and the contrast in that area. Now we're gonna grab a glaze from GW. Waywatcher Green, it's a great glaze to use over these types of greens. This will help blend some of the hard transitions back into the green. So I'm just going to come on and basically just coat every square inch of this vine with Waywatcher, and it will, once it dries, subtly blend some of these colors back into each other and leave the overall vine with a more vibrant appearance in some cases. Waywatcher Green is definitely great when you're trying to keep those greens popping. If you were doing a more dark green or a more, you know, muted palette, you'd come in with a, a wash that was green. But anyway, guys, that's a simple way to make these bases look their best and tie into a theme like our autumn tree lord here. You can see him mounted to the base. We've added a couple tufts of grass. We came back in and highlighted the pumpkins up one more degree and we threw some ivy on the base. Absolutely happy with this model. This is easy. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.